You know, the one thing that you can't do, you can't drop your love for art. There are a lot of artists around the world right now that would just love to become a part of your life and style. Highinpottery.com. That's H-I-N-Pottery.com. They're sponsoring this show. They sponsor my entire podcast. They're taking the time to recognize the art that we do every day, and it's time that we recognize their art. Elevate your experience with art. All high-end products are one-of-a-kind functional art pieces. I have been inside their studios. I've watched their art come to life. To find out more, visit HighInPottery.com, H-I-InPottery.com, and tell them that, that Arrow sent you, and the reason why is because they're, they're going to take care of the shipping and handling, HighInPottery.com. Hey, it's Arrow, and this is Play It Forward, a look at the unexpected changes endured by the entertainers, writers, camera people, and all others affected, but not infected by the global invasion of the coronavirus. These are real people. Real stories, the struggle to play it forward. Episode number 117. During the hot, steamy days that were once July 2020, Round Hill Records reissued 11 solo Rick Emmett recordings in the digital format, which is an extremely important part of music history moving forward. After five decades in the biz, Rick Emmett has earned the adjectives prolific and eclectic. Following over a dozen platinum albums with his band Triumph, he's produced 20 more as a non-platinum indie, ranging from rock and blues to jazz, folk, and even classical. Rick's latest release is Folk Songs for the Farewell Bonfire. He's retired from touring. He's just completed a manuscript of poetry, working title, Reinvention. He also works from his home studio, The Rocket Lab, capturing new singer-songwriter-guitarist material. He also blogs regularly on his website's member forum, interacting with fans and answering posts. He's been a very busy guy during these COVID-19 days. We are unplugged and totally uncut with Rick Emmett. I'm fine, thank you, Arrow. How are you? I, I hear uh, you're, there might be a hurricane heading towards South Carolina. Absolutely, sir, and we're preparing for it. Yeah, it's going to come right up uh, next to us uh, this, uh, this uh, Saturday and Sunday. So by Monday, we should be hopefully all nice and clear and ready to take on COVID-19 again. <laughs> yeah, wow. Hey, talk about piling on. <laughs> hey, I got to tell you, I recently spent some time with the group Tesla, and we were talking about some music they were doing, and, and I go, well, well what was your inspiration and dang it dude if they didn't say well probably one of our biggest inspiration triumph and it was like we must have spent 20 minutes talking about you rick and i hope your ears were burning big time dude yeah isn't that nice that's lovely to hear um yeah you know it's, it's a weird thing i mean obviously i left triumph in 88 but in amongst all of this other stuff that i'm up to there's also been this uh, very heavy, re, uh, renewed interest in Triumph. There's a documentary that Banger Films is doing, and we we got to do the Walk of Fame thing here in Canada. And, and um, yeah, it's it's been uh, it's it's been a very interesting time period for me. I mean, never mind the the whole isolating sort of thing, and um, it, it just. You know, Round Hill's putting out my catalog, and people are interested in Triumph and talking about Triumph. And so um, I got a publisher that's interested in looking at what they'd maybe like a memoir or an autobiography. So I guess that it, there there is that old thing about, you know, how things cycle and circle. And so maybe it's just coming back around again, you know? It, but don't you think that's because you guys put focus on quality music right from the very beginning? Because it never gets old. There's a reason why I want the CD or I want the, the iPod to start all over again, because I want to hear it again and again and again, where the streaming features anymore, you, you don't get to get, you know, hear it over and over again. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, we live in a in a digital universe now, and um, if, if that's what you want, if you want to put it on loop and <laughs> infinite repeat, you can drive yourself crazy if you'd like, Arrow. You know, like that's up to you. Uh, but um, yeah, I, I know what you're saying, and, and the, part and parcel of it all too is the whole like you know you time travel back to 1980, 81, 82. And that, to me, that was really when Triumph was hitting its stride. You know, the album Allied Forces with Magic Power and Fight the Good Fight and those kinds of things. I, I really felt the band discovered its heart at that time, you know. Um, and, of course, vinyl. And uh, there's a renewed interest in that and the fact that it gives you a, an audio experience that you can't really get from a digital thing, you know. So... Uh, yeah, there was something that was happening that was good, and it was righteous, and I think 
I had sort of figured out if you're writing songs and you're calling your band Triumph, well, then your song better be something <laughs> yeah. that speaks to that positive, uplifting kind of value, you know. So, yeah. Well, and it's also because you've you've also explored music deeply with that guitar. I mean, look at what you've even done with your solo career. The way that you you know, I, I love the fact that you've gone into a little bit of jazz with that guitar, and there's the, and, and then folk songs for the for the farewell bonfire, where it sounds like I'm sitting right there in the room with you. You know exactly who your listener is. Uh, well, yes and no. I mean, sometimes. I mean, jazz is like 1% of the marketplace. So when you make decisions like that creatively, you know you're leaving some folks behind. They're not going to go with you. But I also feel like um, if you're an artist, you are supposed to be looking at the horizon and you're supposed to be trying to go to new places and try different things and challenge yourself. And then that means you're challenging your listener too. You're sort of saying, look, come along with me on this journey and let's see if, if we can't find something new inside ourselves, you know. Um, so the artist does it, and then I think, you know, the, the listener, the, the, the person on the other end of it, they're the ones that also go, well, I never thought I'd like this, but, uh, <laughs> you know, if Uncle Ricky's going there, I'm going too, <laughs> goddammit. <laughs> and plus, plus, on top of that, you're not afraid of a writing instrument. I mean, look at a manuscript of poetry, reinvention and stuff like that, because that's taking your, your listener as well as your readers to a completely different level. Yeah, well, I mean... I, I, it, I will grant you that I was a guy that, you know, wore spandex pants and jumped around between the flash pots and the laser lights. And, you know, uh, I was a performer on that level and I was happy to do it. I liked it. I was 100% committed to that kind of a thing. But there was always a part of me that also loved Paul Simon and James Taylor and Joni Mitchell and Leonard Cohen. And, like, it's writing for writing's sake. Uh, and those people. You know, they saw themselves as artists right from the get-go, and uh, that was always a big part of the integrity that I felt. And maybe, you know, going back to your original thing about the Tesla guys, and maybe that was one of the things that they liked about Triumph was the integrity of the writing of, yes. of um, songs that were functioning on more of a level than just, hey, we're having a party, isn't this great? You know, <laughs> it was more about who are we and why are we here? And poetry for me was... It was a lovely kind of going off on a tangent thing because when you're writing song lyrics, you're really trapped by the architecture of rhyme and meter, and you know it's it's a this, you know verse chorus verse chorus. There's a repetitive kind of thing that's it's part of the nature of it. When you write poetry, you can step out of that and you can go you know go to a new place creatively. So I enjoyed that challenge. Was was it you reaching toward the art of music and poetry, or were you being called to it? They're saying, Nick, uh, Rick, uh, I'm tapping you on the back. You have to answer this call. Yeah, exactly. You're 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 touching on the heart of the. <laughs> well, is you know is it is it your own ego or is it that you're it's a calling? It's an avocation, you know. And I do think that I, lots of times people will say to me, you know, geez, Rick, uh, you know. You're, you're, you've been so lucky, and I have been lucky, but I was also, I was kind of being called. You know, once I picked up the guitar and it, it was starting to work for me, it was almost like the guitar was the thing that was leading me. It was this, um, I didn't have a choice. <laughs> you know, I was kind of being, yeah, and and uh, maybe that's true for all artists, you know, whether you're Van Gogh and you're cutting off your ear or you're, you know, you're Leonard Cohen and you're going, well, I, you know, I, like, I can't help this voice that I have. It's a gift from God. <laughs> you know? Dude, you got to come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. Oh, thank you, man. Appreciate that. You bet. You be brilliant and be very safe this weekend, okay? Yes, indeed. I shall. You too. That's played forward. You can listen to full conversations just like this one on all three of my podcasts. Like it's live, unplugged and totally uncut, and view from the writing instrument. All found on every digital platform.